Well, Premier, thank you so much uh, for filling in some of the gaps. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Rick Verk. I'm the uh, Minister of uh, Technology, Innovation and Citizen Services for British Columbia, and along with the Premier, I am your host at this conference. We began this tech strategy several weeks ago where the Premier announced the first pillar, the $100 million venture capital fund that was just announced several weeks ago. So the Premier filled in some of the gaps on pillar number two on talent, on pillar number three on markets, that we take venture capital, we take talent, we take markets, and we take ideas, and we put them together. In the next several days, you're going to hear more about the strategy. What's happened here is I guess I've created a whole bunch of work for myself. I've got to deliver on this. But I don't think I have to deliver on this. I think we have to deliver on this collectively. I know the entire tech sector is going to work with me to make sure we deliver on all three of these pillars. These pillars are going to support a vibrant and flourishing tech sector, a tech sector that's skilled, that's ambitious, that's creative, and is leading growth in British Columbia. I'm thrilled that you've joined us from all over the world right here in British Columbia for our first, our first of many tech summits. British Columbia has also brought to, to our land to here a number of companies from across the world. Some of you might have heard of a small company started just south of here, Microsoft. They were looking for a second home. They looked at London, they looked at Europe, they looked at other parts of the US, they looked at Asia, and they're looking for a second home. They looked at a whole host of factors, some of those that the Premier mentioned today, and Microsoft decided that Vancouver, British Columbia was gonna become their second home. And today we have us with us from, from Microsoft, affectionately known as Runga. Runga Rangarajan is a corporate vice president with technology and research at Microsoft. He's responsible for global aspects of engineering. Among his many responsibilities of all of Microsoft's global development centers, including the one right here in Vancouver in the Microsoft Garage program. It's a program that drives innovation at the grassroots level and advances technology. We have about three billion devices now, if you take personal devices and computers in the world. The suggestion is we're gonna have 10 to 20 billion devices in the next 10 to 15 years. So Zrunga and his team are also responsible to ensure that Microsoft attracts, attains, and trains the best talent in the world right here in British Columbia. And that's exactly what our tech strategy aims to do. So before he begins his remarks on Zrunga's over here somewhere, I want to thank Microsoft. I want to thank Microsoft for making British Columbia their second home and also for being our lead sponsor and key supporter of this inaugural tech strategy that you're going to hear every year. You're going to have tech summits year two, year three, year four, and I want to see all of you come back. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, from Microsoft, Runga. Thank you, Minister Verk. Good morning. Okay, this time with feeling. Good morning. It is wonderful to be here. It's an awesome place. I came to Vancouver a long time ago as a graduate student, 1985. Saw Grouse Mountain, fell in love with it. First time I saw skiing. It is fantastic. It is great to be here. I've come here multiple times since then, of course. It is awesome to have the first tech summit here in BC. It is a fantastic location, incredible people, great universities. Even in 1985, I was visiting my friend here at Simon Fraser. He said, this is the best place for natural language processing. We hardly knew what that was at that time. It is a fantastic time. It feels like a great beginning. We've been at this for a while, but it still feels like a great beginning. So many things seem to be in the early stages. Think about the cloud itself. 
Think about smart assistants like Cortana and Siri. Think about augmented reality, virtual reality. Think about you know, social bots. Think about wearables. Think about health. Think about genetics. Every one of these areas seem to be in the early stages, early stages of this revolution. So it's very fitting that we have an incredible tech summit right here. We are proud to be sponsors of this tech summit. Our worldview is that this is a mobile first, cloud first world. I'll take a few moments to describe to you what that means and then talk about the incredible unleashing of productivity that's going to happen from these. And then I will take you through a lot of examples from right here in Vancouver, where we're making a dramatic difference worldwide. Thank you. So first, the incredible cloud. Cloud is a transformational thing in the industry. It is driven by three major things. The first is hardware like you've never seen before. It's an incredible number of cores in every CPU, large amounts of memory, that's cheap memory, fast flash disks, SSD disks, low latency networks, all of this stuff, top-notch hardware. And this is hardware that can be procured in volume and, and placed in the, in the cloud. And this kind of computing power, the world has not seen ever. And this is a fantastic bounty. So that's, that's the core raw material, the hardware that's assembled in the cloud. The second major factor is software, software that's innovative, software that can scale. We have software that can scale, scale up or scale out, speed up, at, with, a, with a drag of a dial. You can produce faster results or handle more volume, whichever you prefer, by just dragging the dial. This kind of scalability is possible for fast-growing companies. This is possible in the cloud. You know, you might have heard of uh, machine learning stuff, Hadoop. All this stuff is coming together to create scalability unlike ever before. That's the second part, the software that enables you to slap together these large numbers of this very fancy hardware to, to do some good. And the third major aspect is the business model. The fact that all of this stuff is assembled for everyone to share all of this stuff between each other. That we can, you know, may I borrow a million cores for a weekend, please? You could do that. And you don't need to have a project to go set that up and do that. And this is transformational. Pay as you go. Assemble large amounts of compute, large amounts of software that scales beautifully. Be able to do that for a small period of time. This is, this is like adrenaline. Every developer everywhere in British Columbia can make an outsized impact. Just fantastic stories all over the place on doing that. Right here in Canada, we're going to have two major data centers, one in Toronto and the other in Quebec City. We've announced, and this will happen in 2016. This is a fantastic new world that's emerging in the cloud. So this is, cloud is a transformational thing. Let me talk a little bit about uh, what we call more personal computing. We all carry devices. We carry devices like the regular computer, the tablets, uh, phones, you know, band, watch, you know, on and on, Fitbits, everything, all sorts of devices. And then we have new devices like HoloLens and other things. These are all creating an environment where devices and sensors that are close to us are creating a level of intimacy, a, a level of personalization that's unlike ever seen before. It's almost as if there is an invisible guiding hand. There's something all around you is telling you minute by minute and helping you, assisting you. It's as if you had your own personal Jeeves following you everywhere you go. And this is the world of more personal computing. Cortana knows about your activities and can help you with the next set of activities. Xiao Eyes, I mentioned, is a great innovation from, from China. 
that's a social bot that people have conversations with. People have, you know, 20 back and forth conversations with, with this bot. And it is actually satisfactory for people. It is, it is transforming in a, in a fundamental way how people deal with these things. This is a level of intimacy and personalization and context awareness that unlike we have seen before. And this is only the beginning. We have new forms of visualization. So certainly the virtual reality creating an entirely new, different world. But we also have HoloLens. It is brimming with sensors and this is able to mix and match both the virtual and the physical worlds. And so that means whatever you see in the physical world, you can get additional context for it because you have this ability to combine the two. So let's take a look at the video and get a feel for it, and then we'll have more discussion. Volvo is really a human-centric company. That's the core focus of everything we've done in terms of the products we develop, but also the way we interact with their customers. All people know that we stand for safety, but Volvo is so much more. HoloLens helps us to push the envelope on innovation for our customers. The HoloLens is a device that you put on your head and it doesn't intrude in any of the things you do but it also extends the realities around you. You can do something you could never do before. You can see the soul of the car. You can strip the body out and stay with the skeleton, and you, you can play around with it. The HoloLens can allow our customers to see features, colors, options. So rather than working on the computer, seeing things, you can be part of the experience. No one understands how car sensors actually work today. Through the HoloLens, you can see how the car perceives you. And then you, know, you give me as a human being the vantage point of a sensor. It helps to build a much better trust in this type of systems. For example, you see a car coming in front of you. The car has features that could aid in that situation. We have a lot of features that we don't necessarily want you to experience it all, but it's part of our proposition. You're buying into the safest car brand in the world. One of the great things that was said to us by Volvo when we started this was that uh, Volvo loves technology, but only if it makes people's lives simpler. Microsoft HoloLens lets people take imagination and make it real much more efficiently and in a much more collaborative manner. HoloLens will not only help us in the car buying process at the dealership, it can evolve into many areas. We think there are many alternative applications of this tool in the future, and Volvo clearly has an aspiration to, to break out of the pack. It's, um, it's cool. It's, it's way cool. It is, it is very inspiring every time you see the HoloLens video because you, your mind races as to the other opportunities. Uh, I like to visit places, I travel around the world, and I'm a connoisseur of these street signs. When I walk around, I see a street sign and I ask myself, somebody consciously decided to put a name on the street and why did they do that? What is the story behind it? I wish I could walk around and somehow get that context and, and it'll be a fascinating story of understanding a city by walking around. And, and so you get ideas like this. I, we're only scratching the surface of these possibilities. There are two things I would like to emphasize in that video. The first one is obviously the experts who are using HoloLens, experts at Volvo, who are the world's greatest experts on, secure, on safety of the cars. They are always thinking about how to create safety in a fundamental way in the car, make it so simple for all, all humans to use. Uh, whether humans drive them or are autonomous, it doesn't matter. It's a, they, they're the experts on safety. They, they, it helps their job. So makes it simpler for them to imagine the possibilities, try them out, and, and do that. That's one. 
The second part that you saw was a fundamental transformation in how a customer shows up to a showroom and tries to evaluate cars, see the options, and see that, see that come through. And this is what we mean by the incredible productivity that we can unleash. So on the one hand, you have the cloud, which has dramatic ability to process information, huge amounts of resources that you can borrow very flexibly in an elastic manner. And then you have very personal devices that are always trying to help you with every little thing that you do. And we bring that together in ways, so many different ways, to reinvent productivity. So the future would be systems and software and bots and, and Cortana and, and HoloLens and these sorts of experiences backed up by the cloud, backed up by the intelligence in the cloud that creates just wonderful opportunities for increasing productivity. We have seen productivity suite, the standard office, the entire world uses it. But from every little thing like clutter in email, where you try to separate out the, the quote unquote less value emails from the other emails, and, and this is fed by the cloud. And all of this is coming together. We're at a fantastic time at Microsoft where we are coming together as a whole company worldwide to bring all of this stuff together, combine them in ways to improve productivity, make it easier, make it simpler. You saw the guy in the HoloLens video talking about how the goal is not technology. The goal is to make it simpler, safer for people to use cars. Um, so we at Microsoft have these three bold ambitions. First, to do the intelligent cloud, build this intelligent cloud. We want this to be places where it's so easy to collect machine learning models, be able to have intelligence that you can borrow. It's as if you're talking to a friend for a quick piece of advice on something or other. You could do this in software. You could do this very easily. You could get started with a few clicks and a few dollars. And then you have devices, fantastic devices, that approach people. We have, we have even researchers who are thinking about uh, clothes that have sensors and, and that, they can, that can help people live healthier lives. You can decide, you can understand when somebody is about to have a stroke in the future and identify and automatically call people. They know where you are. Cortana can tell you. you, know, you, you you know, we have drones flying around. We could deliver medicines by drones. The, the possibilities are just fantastic. And, and we are on this mission. Our mission is to empower every person, every organization, everywhere on the planet to achieve more. And we believe that in this world, Microsoft has a wide range of assets that we're coming, bringing together to make this happen. So I want to show you a few examples. First, let me give you some context. We at Microsoft think that every place you look, the world looks like the regular physical world with a few differences, people looking at their mobile phones and so on, but there's so much invisible technology that's running around. These are, we think that when these things reach their full potential, full maturity, these will interact in, in ways that just makes our life more enjoyable more productive, more pleasant, more, you know, more impactful for each other. And any sufficiently advanced technology, we believe, will just become invisible, just part of our lives. We don't think about them. They are there, and we just use them. And I want to show you a few examples of this stuff. So Skype is a, is a great, great thing. It enables people to communicate around the world. My mom sits in Philadelphia. She talks to her friends and family around the world. She doesn't know English. She didn't go to college. But she can use Skype on her tablet. She can talk to friends and family around the world. We've set it up so that it's a wonderful conversation. And she's able to reach out to family and have that sense of closeness sit just sitting in Philadelphia with everybody. But this is only scratching the surface. 
We can talk to each other, but then we all talk different languages. And we have been working on language translation technologies in Microsoft Research for decades. We have researchers that are just fantastic at this. And it requires understanding language. Even if you understood the words, understanding parts of the words and see what that means. And then be able to then craft a response or translate into different languages. This is just rocket science. This is fantastic. And this has been going on for a while. And so what we did was to put that together and made that part of Skype so that my mom can talk to anybody else who only speak other languages. You're aware that India has so many different languages. Now she can talk to grandkids who don't know Tamar. So she can talk to other kids, to other people in the family, friends in the family. So what we did was a little experiment. We put a bunch of school kids here in Washington, Tacoma, got them to speak over Skype, Skype translator, with other kids in Mexico. They don't know the languages too well. But it's, a, it's, just, it's just wonderful that this video captures that moment when technology disappears and just humans connect. Let's watch. Hi, can you guess where I live? ¿Te encuentras en América del Norte? Yes. Do you live in Central Mexico? Sí. ¿Te encuentras en Estados Unidos de América? Yes. Do you live in a capital city? Sí. ¿Estás cerca de Seattle? We are very close to Seattle. Are you in Mexico City? Sí. ¿Estás en Tacoma? Yes. Very good guess. Gracias. Thank you. Do you like living in Mexico City? Te gusta vivir en la ciudad de México. Aquí está muy lindo. Here is very nice. What do you do for fun? ¿Qué haces para divertirte? Voy a las playas de México. I'm going to the beaches of Mexico. I like to swim. Me gusta nadar. A mí también. Me too. Where in the world do you wish to travel? ¿A dónde en el mundo te gustaría viajar? A Rusia. To Russia. ¿Y tú? And you? Everywhere. <laughs> Sería increíble algún día verte en México. It would be amazing to see you someday in Mexico. I would really like to visit you sometime. Me gustaría mucho visitarte algún día. A mí también. Me too. <laughs> other things we could do. It is, it is very inspiring. If we just have a generation of kids grow up just relating to each other like that, what if we said we had school trips which was just meeting kids from other countries of the world? The kid in Mexico wants to go to Russia. What if she could have a conversation with kids in Russia, ask basic questions, what did you eat in the morning? It'll be, it'll, the, the level of understanding that we can create, just the impact of just that alone, it is just fantastic. But this is what we mean by unleashing the productivity. The possibilities are just fantastic. So we have an ambition to be, to empower every person in the world. We have people all around the world. We have engineers all around the world. We're a global company. We collaborate across borders, every place, every hour. We have people that come together to create technologies that delight our customers. In engineering locations, we have several locations all around the world. We haven't even completed all the, all the list of things here. And of these, there are six locations that we call global development centers that are very special places. They have critical mass. They have a dramatic impact on our 
products and services that we create for the world, devices that we create for the world. And certainly Vancouver is one of them. And Vancouver feels like the second home for Microsoft. And, and the impact that Vancouver has is just astounding. So what I wanted to do was to today showcase what we're trying to do with productivity, what we're trying to do impacting people's lives, using examples from right here in Vancouver where we have made a dramatic impact. So let me tell you a little bit about Microsoft Vancouver. We are here, we've been expanding over the last several years. We've been here for almost 10 years. And we are now in the process of building, it's in the final stages, a, a fantastic facility for us right here, 725 Granville. To those of you that you know, it's, it's a Nordstrom building. We're gonna have the top two floors, high ceilings, beautiful, inspiring environment for our engineers. It's a very open space, it's a collaborative space. It's the, it's the most advanced facility for us in the world. It is a very inspiring place, beautiful glass walls. Uh, we have the garage facility, we have the garage program. This is the place where we have hackathons, we have lots of you know, devices and software, all of this stuff together where, where young kids can come and play and, and old kids can come and play and explore new technologies. We have an internship program that attracts the best and brightest from across Canada to come work with the people. These teams then work with products and services and devices around Microsoft, and they work with them on a real, real part of some project. And then they go back home seeing the possibilities interacting with people, get a feel for what it's like to be among the, working with the most amazing companies in the world. This is fantastic. I invite every one of you to come uh, take advantage of this gorgeous facility, and we're planning uh, a great set of activities around it. So if I think about the impact that Vancouver's having, we have teams that work on all of these technologies. I don't have to go through all of them. These are all established brands. All of this stuff have dramatic contributions from right here in Vancouver. And the teams, we've, we've been growing, they've been in, scattered in multiple different buildings. We're gonna to come together in Granville and it's gonna be an amazing site. I wanted to give you a few samples of some of these and talk about that a little bit. Uh, as an example of how the company is coming together to make an impact. The first one is Gears of War. This is a game that's been uh, built here. It's completely built here, both for Xbox and, and Windows 10. This is a game that's a billion dollar franchise. Vancouver is a very special place. The kind of talent that we have here in the gaming world is unlike any other. There are very few places in the world where you can assemble a team like we have done here and be able to create state-of-the-art games. This is pushing the boundaries of visualization, rendering, now, which of course you can see has direct relevance to other personal experiences like HoloLens. So all of these things are very synergistic and complementary. This has been a fantastic business. We've had several you know, levels of these games, and we're gearing up for another fantastic game released next year, this year, at the end of this year. And again, it'll, it'll combine technologies from across Microsoft in mobile-first, cloud-first world. And so this is, a, this is a, a great contribution that we're making from right here in Vancouver. Another one is NFL. You know about that little game that's coming up February 7th? Not quite the Stanley Cup. They, say, tell, they tell me it's a big thing. A whole lot of grown men chase around a little ball and fall over each other. Apparently, it's exciting. So it's a big deal. And right here in Vancouver, we're in the state of the art in that, in that uh, world. You see, NFL has instrumented the shoulder pads of every one of the footballers with some fancy sensors. 
So these are RFID sensors. These can tell you the precise location, speed, and acceleration in 3D of every player, every minute, every second. So just imagine, play after play, every player has this thing instrumented. And this data feed is now going to enrich how we experience the game. We have seen video clips of great plays, and, and, and we get all excited about it. But we ain't seen nothing yet. This kind of data that we gather on exactly what happened, you can tell exactly who hit peak speed when. You know what actually made it happen. You can see every angle of it. This increases both the pleasure you get out of watching the game, and also in training and getting better for every one of the players. And this is, a, this is an entirely new game. And this is happening right here in Vancouver. We're going to get a live feed. We're going to get a live feed of the video. We're going to get a live feed of the, of the data. We're going to put it together and create experiences like we have never seen before. And most of all, it is free. It's free on Windows 10. You can take Windows 10. You can get an app. You can follow in real live time. You can be the hero of your party. Let's take a look at a video on the possibilities here. The video is a bit loud, so brace yourself. It is called Next Generation Stats. And you can see every player moving, every, every play that happened, all the details of that. You can, be the, you can be the expert on that. I want to end my presentation with an amazing, inspiring story. This is from OneNote. OneNote is our collaboration tool. You can go to the web, there's Office 365. You can go put notes for each other. You can collaborate on documents. You can share documents, work, work in real time. And you can annotate and you know, work with each other. This is seeing a resonance right here in Vancouver in the world of education. Of course, the, the impact of this is worldwide. So the team here in Vancouver, OneNote team, is driving the use of OneNote for education. They are directly in touch with teachers in the area who are experimenting with class, class books, class notes. So they can, they can work with their students, work with each other, and improve the quality of education. Now, the story that I want to say is a little different. So this team, you see, is a, is a small team. It's an agile team. It's working very differently. You're going to hear about agile you know, lean methods later in the, in the conference. This is a team that's customer obsessed watching this. There are two things that happened, two events that happened. It's a fantastic story. The first one was the team was in London at the BET conference, education conference, and they, were, they met this French pilot. This French pilot has a dyslexic kit that he has made out of a scanner, one note, and, and Windows speech technologies, so you can, you can listen to it. So he takes documents, and then he scans them, and then puts it in OneNote, and then you know, makes it possible to just read it aloud. And this is a very simple stuff that he had assembled together, and, and we have, we have uh, people using this stuff um, in France, in classrooms, and now he's trying to sell this together. And so the team came back and said, wow, that's, that's pretty innovative. That's a very nice use of OneNote. We're very excited. This is, this is awesome. And then the team goes to South by Southwest in Austin, Texas, later this year. This happened last year. And there they met Heather. Heather is a customer. She has a son. She says, you know, son came back from school. And every day, he would hide under the dining table and would cry. 
and she didn't know what, what was going on. She tried and tried, and finally, it was diagnosed to be dyslexia. She was looking for solutions for that. Of course, they helped them with the, with the French pilot's uh, solution, so this was all good. But they came back and said, man, we got a, this seems like a both somebody who's made a solution, and also I'm hearing more and more about this need. What should we do about that? And so they, they decided to participate in what we call the hackathon. You see, the garage is a state of mind, a cultural change that's happening at Microsoft. It's a place, it's a set of people, it's an innovative environment. We talked about that a little bit earlier in the context of Vancouver facility. We have this thing in Redmond. Every year, the garage team puts together what we call the hackathon. It's one of the largest hackathons in the world. A large number of Microsoft employees simply play around, try their passions, put stuff together, and work with each other to create some interesting concepts, interesting hacks. And so this OneNote team decided that they were going to participate in this competition, hackathon, and for the next time. And so their idea was, why don't we take a specialized font that is helpful for dyslexics, makes it less confusing, make it easier to comprehend the material for dyslexics. So that's what they started. So they put their name in and so on. Pretty soon, the system, the hackathon system, enables people to discover each other's passions. Pretty soon they discovered that we have people in Microsoft Research who are experts in accessibility, who are experts in natural language processing, so they worked together, long story short, they created what is called an immersive reading environment. And so this is a reading mode in OneNote. It essentially is able to pinpoint parts of speech, nouns, verbs, adjectives, and so all of that. It's able to annotate the syllables of words. It's able to bracket clauses in, in sentences and annotate them with brackets. And of course, it can read it out. And so they put this stuff together, and, and it is a fantastic experience. What they discovered was with the universal design, it is not just for dyslexics that this is helpful. You know, everybody, regular people, just like this, right? The less confusion, the better. The simplicity is better. More comprehension, easier comprehension is better. Everybody seemed to like it, and it had a benefit back to dyslexics because dyslexics don't feel stigmatized that they're using this reading mode. Everybody's using reading mode. It just helps dyslexics more than the others. And so what started out as a little inspiration for a specific set of customers turned out to be a general purpose valuable thing. Of course, there's lots of sophisticated technology that went into this just trying to look at sentences, try to understand parts of speech, and then be able to then structure it and then simplify it to increase comprehension is, is just fantastic research. And so that's work in progress. So this team continues to build this stuff. They're working with teachers now and, and on this hack, and they made it as an add-on and created this. What is amazing to me is that there's productivity, there's opportunities to improve people's lives everywhere. We didn't start out to think that we could increase the reading comprehension of people at large. We started out with a specific problem of dyslexics, and then we ended up where we can make an impact for everybody. And, and this is an amazing example of the productivity, the simplicity that you gain in people's lives. The OneNote team right here are our heroes. This hackathon, you see, attracts thousands of teams from around the world. And this team here in Vancouver won the first prize. And so we got a big audience with Satya and made a presentation and you know, got a lot more support for this idea. They also showed that a few engineers who have an idea, who are given the freedom to explore, and have the resources of the cloud and, and fantastic software, can make a dramatic difference. And that's a great story that I wanted to leave you with. Um, again, we are on the threshold of an incredible possibilities. The cloud makes every developer like a super developer, right? You, you can bring in you know, hundreds of thousands of cores, millions of cores to a job for a period of time as you like it. You can put together software services 
in a very flexible manner. Few clicks, few dollars. You have fantastic devices that give you personal empathy, context, that's unlike ever before. And so we are here in Vancouver. We have a fantastic facility, beautiful environment, great engineers that are plugged into the major things that are going on in the company. So come join us. Let's do something together. Thank you. Don, I think we got lost back there. That was uh... so much fun. That was a great presentation. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. Now, I bet you, if you guys are looking at your itineraries, guess what? Guess what time it is? You excited? It's coffee time. You get to coffee wake up time. again. A little bit, little bit of coffee caffeine. Time. <laughs> so before you head out, though, one last reminder to download the app. We have who's coming up after the break? Uh, Eric is coming up. Eric from the Lean Startup coming up after the break. If you want to ask him questions, you need to do that through the app. So yeah. please do download it. Okay, so thank you so much. We will see you back here at 1045. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.